A leaked list of donations made to the truckers' convoy has placed many prominent donors under scrutiny. It even cost the job of one senior staff member of the Ford government. After it was discovered, she reportedly made a donation of $100 to the protesters. Now, this has raised questions over what are acceptable grounds for termination. And joining us now with more on this and other employee rights issues, employment lawyer Lior Samfiru. Very good to see you again, Lior. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Candice. So can you be fired if your donation to the Freedom Convoy was made public through that recent data leak? Well, people feel very strongly about this, and certainly employers would. And an employer may think, well, if I disagree with my what my employee does and I feel so strongly, I could just let them go and I don't owe them anything. But that would be wrong. An employer cannot terminate for cause if they don't agree with what their employee does off work hours or generally for off-duty conduct. For an employer to fire someone for off-duty conduct, that employee would have had to do something that impacts the workplace. If, for example, if they've been involved in sexual assault, that's going to impact the workplace. People may feel unsafe working with that individual. On the other hand, in this situation, if an employer wants to let someone go, that would be considered a termination without cause, meaning that employee would be owed severance, which could be a significant amount of money. So I would certainly caution employers from just believing that they can fire someone and not pay them. In many cases, even if you disagree with their views as relates to the convoy, if you let them go without severance, that's going to be a wrongful dismissal. Okay, a lot to get to here. So Ontario is phasing out the vaccine passport on March 1st. Does this change anything for employees? Well, I think there's going to be a temptation to say, well, vaccine passports are done, so we can kind of go back to the way things were before, but not so fast. Employers and employees still have to abide by all measures put in force by public health. That means masking, social distancing, uh, ensuring you don't go to work if you're symptomatic. So you can't take this as permission to do whatever you want. So in the short term, getting rid of vaccine passports is not going to impact your rights in the workplace. Uh, be certainly careful and follow all those uh, guidelines by public health. As COVID numbers and hospitalizations continue to drop, Lior, companies may start bringing employees back to the workplace who had previously been working from home for quite a long time. Do you have the right to refuse to return if you don't feel safe? I, I know a lot of employees don't want to go back. They're still concerned. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. But the rule is this. If your employer is doing what it's supposed to be doing in terms of ensuring workplace safety, you do have to go back to work. If you refuse to go back, despite your employer doing what it's supposed to, that could be considered job, a job abandonment or resignation. That said, you can and should ask questions. What are you doing, employer, to keep me safe? And if the employer is not doing things to keep the employee safe, the employee is able to refuse unsafe work without any penalty. Now, if you're in a situation where you have child care obligations, you're caring for your children while working from home, you can and you need to ask for more time to go back to work. Your employer has to accommodate that. Beyond that, though, if your employer is doing its job, you do have to go back. And finally, Lior, earlier this week, even the premier said because of Omicron, it doesn't matter if you have one shot or 10 shots, you can still catch COVID. So has the variant impacted the effectiveness of vaccine mandates with this being the case? Absolutely, it has. It's now even more difficult for an employer to justify its own vaccine policies. If the government is saying, well, it's not really going to make a difference, it's not necessary to be fully vaccinated to stop the spread, it's not going to stop the spread. So for those employers that have these vaccine policies, you're going to be under more scrutiny and it's going to be more difficult for you to justify those policies. And for those cases or those employees that have filed uh, claims, wrongful dismissal claims against their employers because they were let go for not being vaccinated, I think those cases now get bolstered. It's going to be easier to be successful in those situations. So again, cautionary note for employers, really think about do you need to have vaccine policies in light of what the government is doing? Okay, thank you as always, folks. That's employment lawyer Lior Samfiru. Have a great day. Thank you.